Hey, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to convert a raster image, such as a photo, into a dynamic vector-based graphic. Unlike raster images, vectors retain their razor-sharp edges no matter what size we make them. Open a photo you'd like to use for this project. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. The first step is to make a selection around your subject so we can separate it from its background. There are many ways to do this depending on the version of Photoshop you're using. For CC 2020 and later, click the lock icon to unlock the layer and open your properties panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Properties. Scroll down and click Remove Background. Photoshop automatically selects our subject and creates a layer mask next to it. This masks out the background. For CC 2018 and 2019, open your Quick Selection tool and click Select Subject. This automatically makes a selection around our subject. Then, click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection. For version CC 2017 and earlier, drag your Quick Selection tool over your subject to select it. To remove areas of the selection, press and hold Alt on Windows or Option on a Mac as you drag over those areas. We'll convert our cutout subject as a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively. To do this, click the icon at the upper right and click Convert to Smart Object. Next, we'll add a white background under our subject. Control or Command click the New Layer icon to make a new layer below our subject. We'll fill it with white, but before we do, check your foreground and background colors. If they aren't black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard. Since white is the background color, press Control or Command plus Delete. Make your subject active. Go to Filter, Blur, and Surface Blur. Basically, Surface Blur blurs an image while preserving its edges. The radius specifies the size of the area sampled for the blur, while Threshold controls how much the tonal values of nearby pixels must diverge before becoming part of the blur. Make its radius 10 pixels and its Threshold 10 levels. Temporarily hide the white background and make a new layer. We'll make a composite snapshot of our image by pressing Ctrl-Alt-Shift-E on Windows or Command-Option-Shift-E on a Mac. Hide the bottom subject and make the white background visible again. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Threshold. This changes your image to stark black and white. Let's keep it at its default amount of 128. We'll clip it to the subject directly below it by clicking the Clipping Mask icon or by going to Layer and Create Clipping Mask. Doing this will keep the next step confined to the top subject only. Make the top subject active and open the Burn tool. The Burn and Dodge tool essentially darkens or brightens areas of your image respectively when you brush over them. By the way, in case you didn't know, the terms burn and dodge are dark room photography terms, which are techniques used to darken or brighten photographs. Open your brush picker and pick a soft round brush. Pick midtones for the range and make the exposure 100%. Brush over the white areas of your image where you'd like to burn in more detail. You might need to brush over it a few times. To reverse the effect on those areas, or to bring out more details in the blacks of your image, press and hold Alt or Option, which invokes the Dodge tool. Brush over the blacks to bring out detail hiding in those areas. To use the Burn tool again, simply release the Alt or Option key. Continue to toggle between the Burn and Dodge tools as you brush over your image to bring out details hiding in the white areas and the black areas. Make the Threshold layer active and shift-click the bottom subject to make it and the other subject active. Convert them into one smart object. I'm going to rename it Layer 0 Copy, but you can name it whatever you like. Double-click an empty area of the layer to open its layer style window. Click Stroke. 
The size is 4 pixels, and the position is outside. The blend mode is normal, the opacity is 100%, and the color is black. Convert this layer into a smart object, and go to Filter, Stylize, and Oil Paint. Make the stylization 3, and the cleanliness 3. Lighting is unchecked. Go back to Filter, Sharpen, and Smart Sharpen. This basically sharpens edges without sharpening noise. We'll increase the amount to 500% to increase the contrast along the edges as much as possible. The radius value controls the thickness of the edges. I'll set it at 2 pixels. The edges are now 4 pixels thick, 2 pixels on the light side, and 2 on the dark side. Noise is irrelevant since our image is pure black and white. We'll remove Gaussian blur. Open your Channels panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Channels. Click the dotted circle at the bottom. This makes a selection of our image. Invert the selection by pressing Ctrl or Command Shift I. Open back the Layers panel and open any of the marquee tools. Go inside the selection and right click or secondary click to open the flyout list. Click Make Work Path. Make the tolerance 2 or 3 pixels. Click the adjustment layer icon and click Solid Color. Notice it created a new vector based layer. You know it's a vector if you see this icon. As soon as you clicked Solid Color, the color picker opened. Pick any color you like. I'll pick black. Hide the lower subject. Now, all we can see is our vector portrait on a white background. To save our vector portrait and be able to open it as a vector shape, click the icon at the upper right of the Layers panel and click Duplicate Layer. Open the Document List and click New. Type in the name of your vector image. Notice it created a new document with the name you typed in. Go to File and save a copy if you're using CC 2021 or later. On CC 2020 and earlier, click Save As. For now, I'll save it to my desktop for easy access. It's always a good idea to first save your entire document as a Photoshop PSD file. To open your vector shape in Illustrator, save it as an EPS file. To open it in Photoshop, save it as a Photoshop PDF file. Then click Save. When this window opens, in the General section, make sure the standard is None and check Preserve Photoshop Editing Capabilities. Click Compression. Make sure you choose Do Not Sample and Compression is None. Then click Save PDF. If you see this window, just click Yes. To check that indeed it's a vector shape, open the PDF file you saved. If you open the Paths panel, you'll see the shape path that comprises your vector portrait. Click it to see your paths. To increase its size, press Ctrl or Command T to open your Transform tool. At the top, make sure the Chain Link icon is active between the transform's width and height. This locks their percentages together. Drag the scrubby slider of either the width or the height to the right to increase the size of your vector shape dramatically. Notice it retains its razor sharp edges. To hide the paths, just click inside the paths panel or press Ctrl or Command H. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.